I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm gonna to show you some more pin turning basics and how to make a fancy executive pin. Stay tuned, I'll show you just how I did it. Pin trick. This is day five of my six days of beginner wood turning video series. I'm launching a new video each day of a turning project any beginner can make. And this is my first time turning most of these projects, so you'll see some mistakes that I made and things that I learned. I have a link below in the description for the playlist for all six videos so you can check out the whole series. Now let's get turning. After getting my feet wet with a slimline pin from day four, I was ready to use a fancier pin kit and some nicer wood. The one I'm using today is a one-piece executive pin kit. It's much more decorative and requires slightly different methods to make it. I unpack the kit and it comes with a cap, a twist mechanism, an ink cartridge with spring, a brass tube for the wood blank, and the pin tip. The brass tube is larger than the slimline and it takes a 27 64th drill bit. A brad point bit is best, but I already had a twist bit, so that's what I'm going to use. I'll be using an adjustable pin mandrel and the specific set of bushings for this kit. The bushings have a stepped shoulder so that the large brass tube slips over the skinny side and the larger side is the reference for turning down to the wood blank. And here's the wood I'll be using. It's a blank of Bacote, a wood from South America. It's got a great grain pattern that resembles zebra wood, and you can see once it's cut it has a yellowish brown color with brown stripes. Pretty cool looking wood. I put the tube on the wood blank and marked a line about an eighth of an inch past the tube. And once again, I'll be cutting the blank down on my crosscut sled. It gives a nice square cut so I can drill the hole for the tube straight on my drill press. Just like day four, I clamped down a right angle square and used it to position the blank, which I did poorly as you'll see in just a second. I drilled the hole as deep as the drill press would let me, but I didn't make it all the way through. With the slimline kit, I just held the blank in my hand, but this bit is quite a bit larger, so I clamped the blank to my workbench with a wood backer to prevent blowout. Then I drilled the rest of the way through. My clamping was about as good as my drill positioning today. <laughs> Gluing in the tube is pretty straightforward. I just roughed it up with some sandpaper, then applied the CA glue and twisted in the tube, again just like yesterday. The next step is to square up the ends, and you can do that with a specialty tool called a barrel trimmer, but I'm using a right angle jig for my sander. It's just a piece of MDF with a plywood stop on it that's 90 degrees to the edge. Then I mounted a runner on the bottom, and it's parallel to the front edge, and 90 degrees to the sides. Now before I get to the blank, let's take a sneak peek of day six's project. For the final day of my series, I'll be getting a little festive and turning a Christmas ornament from some Claro walnut. Make sure to check out the description or the end of the video for a link to the six days of beginner wood turning playlist. All right, back to the project. I put the jig in the miter saw of the sander and used the stop to hold the pin blank square while sanding it flush. You wanna go all the way until you see shiny brass on both sides like this. And yeah, I really did a poor job at centering that hole, right? With the tube in the blank, you can see how the bushings are going to work. They go into the tube, and even with my off-center hole here, there's still plenty of wood left to remove before I get down to the bushing's outer size. I put the pin mandrel on the headstock, and since this blank is a lot shorter than the two slimline blanks from yesterday, I installed the adjustable stop nut. I placed it so that the locking nut on the end would engage with the bushing and hold the blank tight. Then I brought in the tailstock for support and started roughing the blank. Almost immediately, the blank started sliding. I didn't lock that stop nut down tight enough, so I cranked it down a little bit tighter and then went back to roughing. I'm using the round carbide tool, which I mistakenly called the circle tool yesterday, to remove the extra wood. It's pretty easy going with this pin, and I went with a slightly more pronounced bulge in the middle of the blank to match the beefier look of the pin. And this time, I went all the way down to the bushings and made sure that I could clean it up easily with the sandpaper. I went through the same sanding progression from 150 to 600 grit with the sanding strips, stopping the pin and sanding with the grain before moving on to the next grit each time. I noticed the Bacote had really open pores, kind of like oak, and they were just filled with sanding dust. So I used some acetone and I wiped the pin down before heading to finishing. Now this really did wonders of clearing up all those grains, and you can see how much dust it took off when you look at the paper towel. I applied the wood turner's finish with a paper towel with the lathe off. Now, I haven't mentioned this before in previous days, 
but I found that the finish does better when it's wiped on with the lathe stopped or really, really slow. If you apply it while it's running at any kind of speed, it's going to dry fast and leave radial streaks. I sand it in between coats with the micro mesh just like in previous days, and I turned the lathe on to help the finish dry after applying each coat. I took the blank off of the mandrel, then I moved on to assembly. The assembly for this kit is very easy, you just have to press in one part. I used a parallel clamp again for pressing the parts together, and I pressed in the cap to the back of the tube. And you can see that the blank got a little cockeyed here while I was trying to press it in. So just make sure you're watching it and adjust it as necessary. One of those pin presses would definitely be a nice addition if you plan on making any kind of volume of pins. Next, the ink cartridge and spring get pushed into the pin tip. Then the twist mechanism screws into the pin tip, loading the spring. And the last piece is just to slide the tube onto the pin tip by hand, and then the pin is fully assembled. Now honestly, I think this pin was a lot easier to make than the slimline one. It also looks a lot nicer too. So don't be afraid to spend that extra money and get a nice pin kit. I want to give a big thank you to Jet Woodworking for sponsoring today's video. There's a link down below in the description. You can go check out the Jet 1221 Variable Speed Lathe. That's the lathe that I used for all these projects. That's day five of my six days of beginner wood turning video series. If you've missed the previous days, there's a playlist right over here. You can go check them out. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.